G'day and welcome back to the Making It With Miles podcast. Um, we're here for another episode to learn a little bit about a construction building, a little bit of about the real estate industry through the lens of a building inspector. And we also dabble a little bit in personal development. Um, we've got two formats of the show. We've got um, the shed. The shed is where we discuss all things related to building, construction, and educating on the real estate market with regards, with regards to your property um, as a building inspector. So just things to look out for if you're a home buyer as well. Some gems with that. Um, as well as that, we also have a, another format called The Journey. The Journey is where we discuss some personal development things. Uh, we double in that every you know 10 episodes, so it's just something, just something that I enjoy doing and I uh, want to provide a bit of value wherever I can. So this episode is The Shed, and we're going to be discussing things to consider and how to go about choosing a contractor to do a job. Okay, It could be uh, a builder, it could just be a tiler, it could just be a carpenter, it could be anything like that. It's getting people in your house to do some construction projects. These are some steps to take, what to understand, how to go about it, and how to get the best results from that contractor for the best price, all right? So the first thing the first thing we want to know is why is it important to engage the right contractor, okay? Let's just go through the scenario of what makes a what makes a bad interaction, okay? What makes it a bad contractor? A bad contractor is someone that's gonna do a shitty job. It's someone they're gonna be pissed off with, dissatisfied, probably they'll shaft you some sort of money there'll be lead to disputes it'll make the whole process a pain in the ass and you're going to be spewing that you went with that bloke in the first place so you really want to get this right you don't want to stuff around with it and you want to make the right choice okay the first things we need to consider and just be aware of is most of the time the contractors that are the most expensive and have the longest lead time, like hardest to get, are usually going to be the best contractors, okay? Not all the time, not all the time, but most of the time that's what's going to be. It goes the other way as well. So the cheapest guy on some occasions is going to be the shittest quality and they'll probably rock up tomorrow, slap out the job and then leave in a blink of an eye. So this is just a balance of probabilities. It's not the rule, okay? So there are definitely contractors out there that are very affordable, that do a ripper job, but probably no one actually hears about them, okay? I've got heaps of contractors like that that I've found across, that I've found throughout my construction process and builders really have a good network of these types of people where they they just price well, they do a great job, they communicate well and it's just you get them on board, you hold them and you just give them the work, you pay them on time. You communicate well with them and they just do the best work for you possible. So this is the type of guys that you want to sort of look for and try find. Um, but it's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, you just pay top dollar to, to get that quality finish uh, that you need. Now, the first thing you need to understand with any project, if it's a retaining wall, if it's a bathroom renter, if it's tiling, whatever it is, you need to ensure that you have a budget, okay? It's not the budget that you may stick with and it's not the budget that you think that job should be worth because you wouldn't have a clue what it should be worth. It's a number, okay? Stick to a number that you can afford and just hold that true as best you can as as you go through this process because it's going to be very beneficial um, and it's going to be needed as you get towards the back end of this. So how to find quality contractors at a reasonable price. So the first thing you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be shortlisting three contractors with this criteria, okay? So you're gonna be going out, you wanna get a big list and try find as many as you possibly can, but you sort of wanna shortlist them to this, okay? The first one is gonna be reputation, okay? So you really wanna understand um, if they're any good, all right? You want, you want referrals from friends, you want to search online and see their online um, ratings and all those types of things and you also want to which i highly recommend you do first is just go out to some random builders that are locally and have a chat to them and just see who they use and who they would recommend you've got a little project a little tiling project um you can say who's your tiler who do you recommend they can be like oh joe blow is a legend he's fantastic his lead time is ridiculous but you'll get the right job uh for the right price okay now builders are happy to give away their secrets they don't really care it doesn't change their it doesn't impact their construction projects so they really don't care and if they're getting work for their trades that's going to help their relationship too so that's one way of going about it and i highly recommend going that way about it first um, and then you research them online and you look at their websites and those types of things as well okay so it's getting that reputation uh up front first the second one is references and portfolio. So you want to sort of see the quality of work that they actually do. 
Um, you want to see if they've got an Instagram page that you can just look at some photos to see the types of things that they actually work with and how they go about it. Um, and if you're happy with that quality of workmanship, um, you want to get them to send you some photos or just show you some work or show you through a job or just send you to an address where you can have a look around of what they've done before, if, if possible. Um, so you can get comfortable with their workmanship and their finish, okay? Um, the, the third one is communication. The, co the contractor proactively wants to speak with you and engage with you and help you out as best as practicable and also they want the job. All right, you'll get a couple of contractors that you'll go out and engage and they just couldn't give two shits. They can't be fucked talking to you. They've got no time. They just, you know, the communication you're having with them is difficult. Just don't push it. It's just not really worth it. They're obviously not going to do the job. They don't really care about the job. They're probably too busy, so you might not even get them anyway. It's just not worth the hassle, okay? If they can communicate with you well, that's going to help you dramatically especially during the actual process and the project itself and the fourth one is quotes you need to make sure you get a scope of works put in place and it needs to be very clear so you want them to write out exactly what they're going to do exactly what they're not going to do and exactly how much it's going to cost you okay you need to be very clear as best as practicable for yourself as exact for exactly what you expect from them okay because again we've spoken about in other episodes what leads to disputes is poor expectations from both parties, okay? So you guys need to be very clear on what you're putting in place um, for your scope of works, which is what you're gonna be engaging these people based on, okay? And also the price associated with it. You know, you need to be very clear on it, okay? There's no extras, there's no hidden fees, there's no hidden bullshit. I want this done and it's gonna cost this much, okay? So what you've done now, you've shortlisted your three contractors. You've gone through the ones, this, you've gone through the four steps. They've got a good reputation. They've been referred to by somebody else. They've got a good portfolio. You're happy with what they, what you see from outside, and you've also got uh, good communication, and you've got a quote from them. All right, that just clearly states exactly what you're doing. So you've got these three contractors all lined up. You're pretty happy with all of them. And then now you've got to go through the process of nominating who you're going to engage to do the work for you. So when you get into this process, you need to consider uh, a couple of things. The first one is going to be the price. So the cheapest price, um, you may love all of them and the, and the cheapest price is fantastic and you love it and you, the quality of work is fantastic. One thing you really need to be sure on is just, just make sure they haven't missed anything in the scope of works. Okay, They've, They haven't missed an entire wall that's meant to be tiled or part of a section of the house meant to be decked or a specific material or whatever it is, you want to be very clear to make sure that the, that the scope that they were doing is exactly as you've said and is exactly the same as everybody else. So it's apples for apples. So we all know we want to go for the cheapest price, okay? Um, with regards to the pricing itself, you might find two contractors that you've engaged and are giving you quotes is outside of your budget, okay? And you might be governed by and forced into that cheapest price. If you're still happy with what they're going to deliver, it might be worth it. But you also, but you also need to consider that maybe that cheapest price, the guy just wasn't right for you and you might have to go to the next step up and adjust your budget accordingly but ensure that you get looked after as best as practicable. Obviously, you're going to be getting a good contractor who you've sort of vetted in that process as well. The next thing to consider as well when you're in – choosing a contractor lead times all right a lead time is a amount of time that that contractor needs to say go okay a lot of contractors that are really really good are fucking flat out because they're flat out with builders they're flat out with their own maybe commercial work contract work whatever they're doing um you just need that lead time because you need to ensure that 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 actually can work in with your project itself if you've got a project that you're already halfway through and you've plastered walls and, t and you're sitting around pulling your dick waiting to get someone out to do some tiling and you call up these three tilers and two of them can't come for two months and one can come next week but he might be the most expensive. You need to have those considerations in place. The best thing you can really do is really plan ahead and get your pricing in early um, but that, that involves a lot of planning, ensuring that you sort of understand the scope of the job up front uh, but that is something you really need to ensure that you get um, tied away because if you push out your job for 12 weeks to wait for one contractor to save 500 bucks maybe on a tiling project or whatever it is um, it, it, it's probably not worth it you really just want to get that job done and out of the way and the third thing to really consider with these uh, with engaging these contractors is just go with your gut all right there's nothing wrong with just feeling out these people understanding who they are they've put some effort in to price a job already so they want the job um, and if they could communicate well and you might just vibe well with them 
Um, you might just say to some, sorry, your lead time is just too much. I can't do it. Your price is too high. I can't do it. Um, you just just feel them out, all right? If, you, if your gut says, you know what, this cheap guy, he's just a bit bit of a dodgy fuckwit. Maybe it's not worth engaging that contractor because you're unsure as to where it's going to go and you just have a bad vibe on it. I am one that this is my most important part. I've had many contractors before. I've used high pages to get uh, re-stumpers and they've come in and I've had my usual re-stumpers price the job. The reason why I got other pricing in is because the, the, my re-stumpers lead time was, it was like 20 weeks. It was something ridiculous. I just couldn't get him in. Um, and his price was like 50 grand. So I, got this, I went on high pages just to get some more pricing because I didn't know anyone else. I spoke to other builders. They didn't have anyone. So I got a few extra pricings off these other contractors. Same thing. Scope was absolutely clear. Their communication was fantastic. And my gut was just like, well, this guy's priced in. He's come out. He's communicating well. Like there's nothing else that can really go. Nothing can go wrong. So I... And his price was like almost 40% cheaper than the guy that I would usually use. So I used him. I, I bit the bullet and I used him and it was the best thing I've ever done. I found a gem from High Pages, coincidentally. Um, and now I've recommended hundreds of bloody jobs to that bloke. It's ridiculous because he's just really good at what he does. He's got a good, cheap workforce for him. So he's probably making money, but that's up to him. That's fine. And um, it went really well for me. So use your gut. You want to be really clear and, and feel it out, make sure it's all right. So you've gone through all these processes, you've considered the price, you've considered the lead times uh, to make sure it's a right fit for you, okay? So to conclude, you've vetted all these people. You've, you've found your three contractors, you've got your three pricings off, the scopes are all the same, you've got all your pricing. You might be leaning towards the highest price contractor, okay? And you really want that contractor to do the job because you just bloody love them. You can either bite the bullet and pay the extra, but it might be outside your budget range. There's nothing wrong with asking to see if there's a way that they can uh, pull their budget back. You might say, I really want to use you. Is there any chance you can pull it back? 200 bucks, 300 bucks. Is there anything you can do? They can tell you to go take a hike, which is completely fair and reasonable because obviously their price is their price. And I've had every client known to man want to squeeze some money out. Um, and there are times when we can do that. We might be able to adjust the scope in a way that can make it a bit cheaper, but most of the time we're not really going to take a hit. But you might find that contractor might need some work and he's like, yeah, sweet man, I'll take it for this or I'll do it for cash or whatever you want to do. And you might take that win. But if they say hit the road, don't take it personally. You might have to go to that other price, which is more within your budget range. And um, you know, you're still comfortable with that contractor and you still, you've still felt them out and it's like, all right, cool, I'll have to commit to this person instead. Um, the thing you need to do after that is communicate to all the contractors that you've engaged. Let them know you're unsuccessful and they might want to know why and just communicate with them, okay? They really will appreciate that and it's going to help them out a lot. Now, you've engaged the contractor, you're doing the work. Just some things to really understand about this process is you want to make sure you are communicating every step of the way and they are also communicating back to you every step of the way, right? You want to keep them updated on the project and where it's at and the lead time associated with it. Um, for example, there might be a 12-week lead time. You're like, all right, fine. I will be ready for you on this date. Book me in for this date. You need to make sure you hit that date for that contractor um, just to keep that relationship in place, right? Stop making it. Don't make it hard for them. Just achieve the goal and then they'll look after you 100%. Pay them on time when needed, okay? They all have in their quote some sort of payment schedule. They might want to deposit if it seems fair and reasonable. If, it, if they're taking an 80% deposit, you can tell them to you know, shove it up their ass. If it's a 10% deposit, 20% deposit, maybe it's to cover materials, might be 50% and then 50% on final, on, on completion. That's completely fair and reasonable and I've done that numerous times with contractors. Um, so just make sure, yeah, you're paying them and ensuring in return that they're, and, and ensuring in return, like as you pay them, that they're doing the things that they're saying they're going to do, okay? If they're saying one thing and doing another, be bloody mindful of it and be wary of it, okay? So if that's what's going to happen, just go, hang on a minute, mate. You said X, Y, and Z. Is there anything wrong? What's going on? This is the expectation. Don't get defensive with it. Just try to get some clarity from it, Okay. We're all people. We all just want to do a job. We just want to go to work. We want to do what we do best and then go home, okay? 
Again, throughout that process as well, when you're engaging that contract, if there's something that you think is outside of the scope or they're doing incorrectly or it's not to your expectation, again, to mitigate any disputes, expectations need to be met. So just make sure you communicate that with them. Ideally in this situation, that scope of works that you've engaged that contractor with is so fucking clear that they have nothing to fall back. It's just black and white. It's like, you've said this, it's written here, whatever it might be, okay? So just make sure it's very, you're very clear on it. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna give you the best chance you got. If all three are all too expensive, while that means your expectations on what a budget's gonna be, you just can't afford it, unfortunately. And you gotta redesign, change the whole scope itself just to make it more affordable, right? And these contractors will be the ones that can help you do that. They'll be the ones that say, all right, if you just cut this, this, and this out, this will you know, chop our prices in half, all right? And it'll be consistent with the other contractors as well. So be mindful of that. When you're engaging contractors, just follow these steps, okay? It's, it's very simple. Make sure you get those three quotes. Don't just stick with the one that your brother, sister, sister's postman's dog walker recommended to you. It's not always gonna be the best one. And even if you went to a registered builder nearby and you said, oh, I'll use this guy, he's fantastic, still might not be the best price and the best contractor for you. So follow these steps. I hope it finds some value to someone. Um, if you're doing any construction projects or renovation projects, DIYs and the scope that you can't really do yourself, share it, like, subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And um, we will see you on the next one. Take it easy, mate.